Good evening, everybody, and welcome. My name is Lucy. I am a StriveScan facilitator this evening. Welcome to the Ohio Association of College Admission Counseling sure. Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us, joining us this evening. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Just make sure that when you do type the question that you use the at symbol and then for whichever school that you are asking your question to. Your camera and microphone are, are off. Uh, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of the many different sessions that are happening this evening. Um, so please feel free to sign up for additional sessions. The presentation is also being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website where you registered for this event this evening. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our presenters. And first we are going to hear from University of Michigan. Thanks so much, Lucy. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, there we go. So welcome everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. My name is Chloe Hypes and I am the admissions counselor from the University of Michigan for all of Northern Ohio. I'm also joined by my colleague, Brian Kusak, who you will hear from in just a couple minutes. Um, and he is responsible for all of Southern Ohio. And we are super excited that you guys wanna learn more about the University of Michigan. Um, so to start off, I'm just going to give you some, some general information about the University of Michigan, and this is applicable to any student, no matter what you study. So first of all, the University of Michigan is located in the city of Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor is a great place to live. All of our Michigan students really love it, and I loved it so much as an undergrad that I stuck around to work here. I think that Ann Arbor is a super fun place to live and learn, and I think that it makes our campus especially unique because our campus is super intertwined with the downtown community. So you you will be going to class and living really close to all the fun things to do downtown, different movie theaters, restaurants, our Arboretum, which is a big forested area that people like to go hike, and even tube down during the river. So we think that Ann Arbor is a super fun place for our students to live and learn. Also just want to talk a bit about the university generally. We do have 14 different undergraduate schools and colleges with over 280 degree options, while also keeping an average student to faculty ratio of 15 to 1. So here at the University of Michigan, the bottom line is you really can study anything. So if you know really specifically what you want to do, this could be a great fit. But if you are like me and you are very undecided, this is absolutely a great place to come and explore all your different options before choosing a major. We are also the number one public research university in the US. So that means that your professors and graduate student instructors are doing cutting edge research at the top of their fields. And what that means for you is it gives you a lot of opportunity to get involved in undergraduate research as soon as you are on campus. There are, ton there are tons of positions for you to get involved in any sort of research that you're interested in, either for credit towards your degree or as a part-time paid position. Another thing that any student can get involved in, no matter what they study, are of course by joining one of our more than 1600 student organizations. The reason we like to highlight this is, again, you really can do whatever you want at Michigan. We are a larger institution, so we have a lot of opportunities for you. We have the kind of classic student clubs that you may have heard of, maybe like pre-med clubs or some kind of like student council, things that you may be already be in already be involved in. But we also have a ton of opportunity for exploration here. We certainly have some kind of off the wall clubs, some that are just for socializing and some that are for professional development. So again, this can be a great way to supplement your education and it's a great way for you to meet students on campus. Okay, so before I turn it over to Brian to talk a little bit more about our application review, I do wanna make sure that you all know that when you apply to the University of Michigan, you do not just apply to the college generally, right? You need to apply to one of our seven specific schools and colleges. Most of our students apply through LSA or the College of Literature, Science and the Arts as it is our biggest and broadest unit. It is our liberal arts degree, so you'd be taking all of those distribution courses and they have almost a hundred majors to offer there. So this is where most of our students will fall, but of course, as you are checking out our application, you should make sure you don't fall into one of those more specific categories like the College of Engineering, the School of Nursing, the School of Kinesiology, or any of our talent-based units, the School of Art and Design, the School of Music, Theater, and Dance, or the College of Architecture and Urban Planning. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Brian so he can give you a little bit of a rundown about how we review applications. All right, thanks, Chloe. So we do have just a couple minutes. This is going to be a very quick overview of the application process at University of Michigan. 
First and foremost, the most important thing to know is that we accept both the common application or the coalition application. We have no preference between the two. They both ask for the same information, just in a slightly different order. So we encourage you to use whichever one you are most, most comfortable using as part of the college application process. Outside of the application itself, you do also have to send us your official high school transcripts. Those need to be sent to us by your high school, not by you directly. Um, we also need one letter of recommendation from an academic teacher, preferably somebody who's had you in the past two years. And of course, a school report submitted by your high school counselor that just helps us contextualize your academic performance as a high school student. Outside of that, you do have to write three essays as part of the application, the longest of which, though, is only one page. So I promise you they are not as difficult as they sound. Now, as part of the application process, or rather as, a, as an effect of the current pandemic, we have made some changes. So first and foremost, Chloe and I have been working at home now for about 12 months. What that means is all of our on-campus visits, events, and tours are canceled for the foreseeable future. Now, we do recognize that coming to campus is a good way of figuring out which places you'd like to apply to college. So we do offer a number of virtual resources on our website that I'll show you in just a minute. Um, as part of these resources, you can do virtual information sessions. You can also do virtual Q&As with admissions counselors like Chloe and myself. Now, the other big changes for the application process this year have been as it relates to test scores um, and to the application deadline. So this past year, students who applied to Michigan were able to apply test flexible. What that means is if you didn't have an ACT or an SAT available, you could apply without one. But if you had taken an ACT or an SAT, we expected you to send those scores to us. Also for this past year, students who applied for early action, the deadline had been moved back to November 15th and those students received a decision in January. In a typical year, the early action deadline would be November 1st and you would get your decision at the end of December. At this time, it's too early to say if that test policy and the application deadline will carry over to next year. The university likely will not have a final decision on that until sometime this summer. So please check back in with us as you go through the application process. And if Chloe, if you wanna to jump to the next slide. So here you can see our virtual admissions resources. If you go to the admissions.umich.edu website and look at the visit us page, you'll be able to see this find your counselor, take a virtual tour, view our information session. And if you have any follow-up questions because of this brief or after this brief overview, you can reach out to Chloe and I directly. Again, Chloe is your counselor if you live north of Columbus and I am your counselor if you live in Columbus on south and farther south. We're also happy to answer any questions you have in the Q&A feature, but again, thank you for your time. Thank you. Next up, we will hear from the University of Toledo. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Gabe Lamelli, and I serve as Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions here at the University of Toledo. I do have my colleague here, Drew Saltenstein. Um, he will be working with me to answer your, any questions that you would have in the Q&A, so feel free to do that while I'm presenting or any time after that. So the biggest reason that I'm here this evening with you is to share with you um, why U Toledo provides a unique combination of opportunities that most universities can't offer. So the first thing is that we are a comprehensive but mid-sized, diverse, and student-centered university. You have many options before or during your first year with 130 plus majors to suit your talents and academic interests. You can choose from nearly a thousand courses that will let you explore your interests while you fulfill university requirements, even before you declare a major. You can also enjoy being on a lively campus with numerous entertainment activities, many of which are even free to you. You can even participate in and lead one of 400 plus student organizations as well. So another unique, uh, something unique about us is that you can benefit uh, from a metropolitan located campus that's in a safe residential area. You know, you can take advantage of many part-time jobs and career-related internships that are only minutes away because of our metropolitan area location. In fact, over three dozen Fortune 500 companies are within three hours of Toledo and hundreds of private companies and nonprofits are within our community boundaries. You can also enjoy many entertainment activities near campus in the broader Toledo area and at Lake Erie and also Cedar Point if you want to take a short drive. US News ranked Toledo the number two US city for outdoor activity 
And, and uh, uh, our 19 Toledo Metro Parks actually have a lot to do with that. To be honest with you, when I heard about that ranking, I was like, seriously? Here in Northwestern Ohio? Nothing against Ohio, but you know, we all know how the weather is here. And the last unique combination of opportunities is an affordable cost that will position students for future financial well being. You can attend the best four year college in Ohio for affordability, flexibility, and student services. You can also live in one of the most affordable cities in the US for college students. On that list, Toledo was ranked number three. And you can be assured that your tuition rate will be fixed for four academic years thanks to the Toledo, Toledo tuition guarantee. And you can increase your wealth over your lifetime by earning more after graduation, along with having low student low debt. In fact, we are number one in Ohio amongst public universities for average graduate salaries compared to student loan debt. So just to recap, you have the opportunity to attend a university that has a unique combination of opportunities that's different than a lot of other schools out there in this nation. We are a comprehensive, but mid-sized, diverse, and student-centered university. We have the benefits of a metropolitan located campus that's in a safe residential area. And we're at an affordable cost that will position students for future financial well-being. So thank you so much for participating this evening. We're really hoping that you take advantage of this unique combination and that you stay in touch with us as well. You can email us, you can call us, you can send a text message, you can um, interact through any of the social media platforms that are out there. If you jump on our website, you can also schedule in-person um, visits this coming spring. You'll also be, up, uh, be able to take the opportunity to schedule a virtual visit with us if you would like. You can see who your specific um, admission counselor is too. And just FYI, we actually were the first college in Ohio, uh, sorry, the first public university in Ohio to go test optional. And we're continuing that throughout um, the next years that we can see going forward. So for the fall of 2021, we're test optional, we're super scoring. We do that basically to allow you the opportunity to put your best foot forward. And uh, we also have merit scholarships um, that are open to test optional students, as well as admission into most of our academic colleges. So thank you so much for participating this evening and go Rockets. Great, thank you. Next up, we will hear from The Ohio State University. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to share my screen here quickly if I can if I can do it. Oh, let's see. That's not going to work. Let me try again. There we go. All right, and let me present. All right, there we go. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you all again for being here. My name is Tracy Schumann and I serve as Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions at The Ohio State University. I'm glad that you were able to join us and learn more about all of the wonderful universities and colleagues that are presenting with us tonight. Ohio State is one of the largest and most comprehensive institutions in the country. Uh, we are ranked as a uh, top 20 public institution as well as a tier one research institution. Um, and so what that means for you are lots of opportunities. Um, and I share the size of our campus and the, the enrollment, the number of students that are enrolled at the university, not as something to scare you or intimidate you, but again, to really help you understand the opportunities for you are limitless. With over 200 majors to choose from and over 500 specializations, we really are allowing students to craft their own academic uh, pro program and their own academic uh, experience um, because of the ways that we can build very unique um, in-classroom and out-of-classroom experiences. Some of the things that we really like to highlight at Ohio State outside of the classroom are the ways that we're going to give you experiential learning opportunities. These include ways to get involved in research. So all of our undergraduate students are eligible to begin research as early as their freshman year. We are heavily invested in, in helping our students find those important internships and co-ops. Uh, we're also looking for you to get engaged in leadership opportunities on our, on our campus, as well as continuing a lot of the great service work that you're doing and service learning that you're doing now and, and continuing that on our campus. Um, we really also invest in our students uh, tech, in the technology on our campus and our students' ability to access that as well. All of our incoming freshman students are provided a free iPad Air through our digital flagship program. 
that you're allowed to keep for four years. Our faculty have begun to incorporate this technology into their classrooms. And we're also teaching students how to code and how to build mobile apps um, so that you can really maximize this great tool and resource that we've provided you. Uh, we emphasize a lot of our efforts on your first year at Ohio State, ensuring that you are successful. Um, where 90, almost 95% of our first year students return for their second year. Um, so our first year retention rate is something that we're very proud of. But those supports and that continued um, uh, involvement doesn't end after the first year. We also have a second year program called our STEP, STEP program that provides funding for students to do a variety of things, whether it's internships or research um, and working with faculty and staff to really build those relationships and, and start that um, out of classroom experience very early. Um, to give you some ideas about where we rank, as I mentioned earlier, we are the number one ranked public institution in the state of Ohio. Uh, we're very excited to have our current, our third year in a row, um, uh, Fulbright Scholar as well, um, and Rhodes Scholar, I should say, as well. Um, so we're very excited about that. Um, our students, uh, we're also recognized at, for our undergraduate teaching. And so again, while we are a large comprehensive university where we're bringing together a variety of academic areas, um, we're also recognized for the great work that our faculty are doing. The research that they're doing in their, in their own work, they're truly bringing it back to the classroom for you to experience firsthand. There are a variety of opportunities for you to get engaged and involved with uh, throughout the application process. The Moral Scholarship Program at Ohio State is one of the premier diversity and social justice based scholarship programs in the country. We also have a very robust honors and scholars program really designed for those students who have gone above and beyond in their high school uh, curriculum and career and are looking for that um, more rigorous experience in college as well. And we also have a variety of learning communities for students to take advantage of. This is a great way for you to live and learn with students who have similar interests as you to really begin to build that community um, and find that niche as you transition from high school to college. Um, uh, this, we are also located in the city of Columbus, which is a great asset for our students. Not only is Columbus the capital of the state of Ohio, uh, but truly is a great resource when it comes to internships, job opportunities, uh, when it comes to uh, the ability for you to access entertainment and, um, and, and all the wonderful things that the city has to offer. Um, I think it's really the best of both worlds that we have such a great, wonderful campus community with really just a few minutes down the road, the ability to access a large metropolitan city and take advantage of all the things that Columbus has to offer. To apply to the Ohio State University, you must complete the common application. Um, we are looking for students to send their official transcripts and for both Autumn 21 and Autumn 22, we currently are test optional. Um, our deadline for students applying for Autumn 22 is November 1st. Um, so please know that that is our early action deadline. We re recommend students apply to that deadline because it is also our merit scholarship deadline. So if you are interested in merit scholarships, you must meet that early action deadline of November 1st. Um, it is also given, we also give priority consideration to students who are applying to engineering, the Moral Scholarship Program, and the Honors and Scholars Program. Um, February 1st is our final deadline, um, so students who don't meet that early action deadline can apply through February 1st. Um, you're willing, you have the ability to learn more about Ohio State um, through some of the, several, several of the websites that are listed here. Unfortunately, we are not offering any in-person visits at this point, but we encourage you to visit our website to find a, a variety of virtual opportunities. Thank you, and as always, go Buckeyes. Thank you. Next up, we will hear from Uni University of Vermont. All right. Thanks, everyone. Let me just get my screen shared here so we can see some visuals. Uh, my name is Jesse Murray. I thank you all for joining today and learning a little bit about uh, the University of Vermont as well as a few other institutions. Um, the University of Vermont is also known as UVM, and we are a medium-sized public research institution with about 10,000 undergraduate students. You can see on our screen here um, the breakdown of in-state students versus out-of-state students, which is a little bit unique for a public research institution. Um, we have about 27% of our students coming from within the state of Vermont, as, and then about 73% of our students coming from outside of Vermont. That's for a few different reasons, one being that Vermont is a small state, 
uh, with a small population, but also we really do attract students from all across the country um, and world. So it makes it a really interesting student body um, and really adds to the student experience. And that's definitely one distinguishing feature of UVM. We have about 100 different majors for our students to choose from in seven academic schools and colleges, as well as 40 accelerated master's programs for students that know they want to get an advanced degree, they can do so um, in just five years getting a bachelor's and master's degree. Um, our size as well as the breadth and depth of our different academic programs really all add to the UVM experience. Putting knowledge to work in learning through doing is another hallmark of UVM education. Our students participate in internships, research opportunities, service learning, study abroad, and lots of other hands-on experiences that really put their knowledge to work and make their education come to life. Students find these opportunities through our career center, through their academic advisors and professors, as well as through our numerous different support offices like our study abroad office or our community and university partnership office. The, the residential experience where you live on campus can be a big part of the college experience, especially as a first year student. We do require that students live on campus for at least their first two years. Um, and we have created uh, these sort of um, communities called our residential learning communities that we put a lot of thought into um, that bring students together around common interests and create a feeling of home away from home. Um, students can choose to live with like-minded individuals in themes like wellness, sustainability, the outdoors, or even the arts. And this makes it so that community is really built into the experience starting day one. UVM is a community really dedicated to supporting and celebrating the unique identity of every student, faculty, and staff member. Uh, we share many things in common within our community, uh, most importantly, a commitment to promoting respect, integrity, innovation, openness, justice, and responsibility. These values are what we call our common ground. When students arrive on campus, they sign a pledge to these values um, at a candlelight ceremony on the University Green. It's one of UVM's most cherished traditions and we do it every year. Um, our community is also, deep, also deeply values diversity, equity, and inclusion in every aspect of campus life. We have identity centers, which are active places to gather, plan and actively engage in these areas. And for students who share a strong common identity or want to explore their own identity, these can become a second home on campus. Our four general education requirements that every UVM student will fulfill further connects these values. You can see we have um, two course requirements focused on diversity, another on sustainability, and at least one quantitative reasoning as well as foundational writing and information literacy. And we chose those specifically because we want you to develop um, integrated competencies that are essential to lifelong learning and really responsible citizenship. UVM would not be the same without Burlington and Burlington would definitely not be the same without UVM. The energy of campus uh, really feeds the town and the town feeds it back to the university with great internships, a really thriving music scene, world-class restaurants, coffee uh, shops, miles of trails, parks, and beaches. Uh, Burlington really is a thriving college town surrounded by the beautiful landscape of the Green Mountains and Lake Champlain, which also makes us a great place to study if you appreciate the great outdoors. So seeing yourself at UVM is the first step. Um, the next steps would be to stay connected with UVM so you can we can send you useful updates, um, staying on track with the admissions requirements, which you can learn more about at uvm.edu slash apply. And when the time does come to apply, you can use the Common App or the Coalition App. Um, on average, our students have a 3.7 out of a 4.0 unweighted GPA. Um, we did go test optional this year, and we also have committed to going test optional for the next two application cycles. Um, if you have had the opportunity to take the ACT or SAT and feel like your scores are an accurate representation of your academic achievement, you can feel free to send them along. Otherwise, you will not be disadvantaged in the admissions process if you haven't been able to take these exams. Um, and we automatically consider students for the Honors College when they apply, as well as our merit scholarships. Overall, the University of Vermont is a wonderful option for students who want a variety of academic opportunities. Um, as well as a strong and tight-knit community um, and within a beautiful location. We would love to have you join us for a virtual information session or connect with you individually and answer any questions that you might have. Thanks so much for learning a little bit more about UVM. Great, thank you. Uh, next up, we will hear from the University of Akron.
There we go. Here I am live. My name is Chris from the University of Akron, Office of Undergraduate Admissions. Also a proud two-time graduate from UA. Actually earned my bachelor's degree in marketing and my master's in higher education administration. So just going to take some time to tell you about UA. Just want to tell you why the top reasons why students do choose the University of Akron for their school of choice because of our outstanding academic programs. We do offer over 200 different majors to choose from. Definitely known for our College of Engineering. Also, our uh, business school is amazing. Uh, actually, just recently rated by Post and Quants of a top 40 public business school in the nation and number one in Northeast Ohio. Doesn't matter what major you go into, there are gonna be amazing opportunities for real world experience. If you wanna be a teacher, we got student teaching, nursing, we got those clinicals, co-ops, internships across the board, and even research experiences for our undergraduate students. You can see there, 92% of our undergraduate students are getting a full-time job or a continuing education and a master's degree program within six months of graduation. We also have a very beautiful and safe campus, including over 80 buildings on eight, 218 acres, but it's very close and compact. The, farthest walk you'd have to do is about 15 minutes, but most of your walks are going to be about two to three minutes in between your buildings. Also offer over 340 different clubs and student organizations. So you have the anime club, we have esports. If you're a gamer, if you like playing Warzone, we have other students that want to play Warzone with you. We have an equestrian team. Uh, we have uh, just a wide range of stuff for you to check out. We also are Division One, part of the Mid-American Conference. Every home sporting event is free for students to go to. So you can check out our men's soccer team that won a national title in 2010, been to multiple Final Fours and another national title game in there too. And then the Akron area as a whole is a great advantage for students that attend the University of Akron. When you want to do the clinical rotation, we have three hospitals within a five-minute drive. We have a bunch of businesses right in downtown, which is, again, just a five-minute walk from campus. Goodyear headquarters right here. Smuckers employs more students from the University of Akron than any other college or university in the nation, and we have all those great corporate connections for you to take advantage of. Want to make sure you also feel supported, so take advantage of all those academic support services, including the academic advisor, which will be someone in your program. You won't have a freshman year advisor and then get into your program. You're going to be connected to your major from the beginning. Uh, we have over 18,000 students on campus currently, but an 18 to 1 faculty student ratio. So 93% of your classes will be 50 students or less. 73% of your classes will be 30 students or less. Also have an amazing Office of Multicultural Development that can get you connected with all of our diverse student population on campus. And of course, free tutoring for your subjects. We also have the number fourth ranked rec center in the nation for any college or university that is also free for students to use. Has an indoor rock wall, lazy river, whirlpool, Olympic sized swimming pool, swimming pool, card equipment, four basketball courts, indoor track, and a health center to use. So you can definitely get your workout on. They also sponsor all of our intramural sports and club sports teams. So if you were interested in doing flag football or lacrosse or rugby or anything else, we probably have a team for you on campus to join. With living on campus, we do have a very a few different styles of residence halls to choose from. It doesn't matter which one you select though, they all have high-speed internet, cable TV, central air conditioning, that's awesome, right? Especially right now um, when it's 50 degrees out, and free laundry. Uh, that's right, free laundry. All you need is laundry detergent and dryer sheets and every single facility or residence hall has their own laundry facility. We also have our own Akron Netflix system called the Res Life Cinema. So we have movies and TV shows streaming online for free for you living on campus. We also have those themed housing options. So incoming students living together based off their major, potentially engineering or business, or maybe a pre-med track too. You actually get to pick the exact room that you're going to live in and the exact roommate that you're going to have going into your freshman year. So just know that you have that ownership of it, which is pretty awesome. You can check out the brand new tour videos and 360 reviews on the website, uacron.edu slash reslife to check out all those various options and all the great amenities that they do offer. I know you're gonna be hungry at some point while you're on campus, so just know we have a bunch of dining options as well. We have three Starbucks, two Chick-fil-A, a Cadoba, Pan Express, and Ant Pretzels uh, for you to enjoy. And they all actually take your meal plan. We also have that traditional college cafeteria called Rob's Cafe, which is delicious grub all the time. Checking out that burger station, stir fry, whatever the entree of the day is, um, all the good stuff that you can you have, you will not go hungry, I guarantee it. And as I mentioned, a lot of great stuff to do in the Akron area, uh, even on campus. We have our game room with a bowling alley, pool tables, a movie theater. You have a performing arts hall uh, center right on campus as well that brings Broadway shows to campus. And then again, just walking five minutes to downtown Akron and taking advantage of the Akron Art Museum or Lot 3, which is an outdoor concert venue. You have the minor league baseball team for the Cleveland Indians known as the Akron Rubber Ducks. Check them out with those great fireworks shows on Friday nights. A bunch of restaurants to enjoy. Uh, 
in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park, the only national park in the state of Ohio, right in our backyard as well. For those of you who are interested in applying to the University of Acker, we do have our own application, which will take you about five minutes to do. There's no essay. We are also on the Common App, and we don't care which one you do. And when you apply to the University of Akron, you are automatically applying directly to your major. There's no supplemental application to apply for any of our majors. We just need your high school transcript sent to us from your counselor and then your ACT or SAT scores, but we are test optional for the class of 2021 and the class of 2022. After you submit those materials, you will receive your acceptance email within 24 hours um, and then your acceptance letter in the mail a couple weeks after that and then it'll be time to confirm your enrollment and take advantage of those next steps of orientation. Separate from applying to main campus is applying to our Williams Honors College to note their preferred criteria and their deadlines of January 4th, their late deadline of April 1st. So if you are a senior, there is still time to apply for the Williams Honors College. If accepted, you do receive an additional scholarship through them and you can live in the Honors Residence Hall with all the other honor students. Uh, with affordability, we do have the UA tuition guarantee program, so your tuition and fees are locked in for four years or those eight semesters. Um, you are, are also automatically considered for the Akron Guarantee Scholarship, which actually increases as you continue on at UA. Um, so you can see there, as long as you stay on track to graduation, you get more money every year. We are offering in-person visits currently, so go to uakron.edu slash visit for our in-person and virtual sessions. Have a great day. Go Zips. Great. Thank you. And then finally, we will hear from Michigan State University. Hello, everyone. Just give me one second to share the slides and we'll have Iris start off. Okay, for starters, my name is Riley Van Pelt and I'm an in-state admissions counselor at Michigan State University. And I'm gonna have Iris start things off. Iris, you're on mute. Well, Is that better? Just, yep, good now. All right, thank you. <laughs> Technology. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Iris Shen Van Beer, and I'm the admissions counselor who works with students from Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky. And I'd like to welcome you to Michigan State University's presentation. Um, MSU, if you aren't familiar with where we're located, we are located right in the middle of the state of Michigan. Um, I like to use my hand, which is what a lot of Michiganders use to uh, denote where they're at. And we're right near the state capital of Lansing, Michigan. We are a big institution, large institution, about almost uh, 50,000 students, about 39,000 undergraduate students. Um, we have students from all 50 states, 120 plus countries, we have about 22% students of color, 24% are out of state. Um, and by the way, Ohio is the third largest state that we have students from. So it's really great. If you come to MSU, you'll be in good company. We have over 200 different areas of studies in 17 degree granting colleges, five of them which are um, uh, professional colleges. So three medical schools, only school in the nation, with three medical schools, plus a law school and a college of nursing. We have three residential colleges where you can take that big university, bring it down a little bit to a smaller living learning community, plus living learning communities for the College of Engineering, the College of Business, and if you're interested in environmental studies. So lots of different things, over 200 majors, over 100 different minors to study. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Riley to talk about some of our other things on Michigan State's campus. Yeah, absolutely. So at Michigan State, we really like to highlight our out of classroom opportunities. So we have an amazing entrepreneurship minor at Michigan State for students who either want to learn how to start a business or already have great business ideas and can actually get that funded while you're a student. We're one of the top 100 undergraduate research institutions in the nation. And from the time that you're a freshman to a senior, you have amazing opportunities to get involved with groundbreaking research. We even, we've even had students who have developed the COVID tests that are being used all over Michigan and the, United, and the United States, and these are undergraduate students. In non-COVID years, we have over 275 study abroad programs on all seven continents. So if you do want to study abroad in Antarctica, there is an option to do so, though I recommend somewhere warmer, just in my opinion. And finally, we also have over 900 student organizations that can really help you set, set up a course to be involved with a lot of great things. I'm an alumni of Michigan State, and during my time, 
I was a part of the Michigan State University Running Club and the Global Sales Leadership Society. So it's generally recommended to join one club that you want to do for fun and one club to enhance your academics. And a lot of times these can lead to great internship opportunities, co-ops and research opportunities. So kind of going over there, we really want to set students up for success and we show that we set students up for success with our freshman retention rates and our 95% job placement rate. The reason why we're so successful with high, setting students up for success is due to our engagement centers. So our engagement centers give free help rooms for all classes, intercultural support, free nurse practitioners. So you don't have to go all the way across campus to have all the support. You can literally go to the building next door or right across and have all this amazing support at Michigan State. And plus we have a lot of great programs. So one area I do wanna highlight is our honors college, which really allows students to customize their curriculum so they can take a variety of undergraduate and graduate courses that are inside their major and outside of their major. And it also gives them a lot of great research opportunities, chances to pick their classes first amongst all students as well. So we have the honors college that's available for a lot of our top students. Now, going on from there, we do wanna talk about financial aid and I'm gonna hand it back to Iris to talk about some of the opportunities specifically for Ohio students. Yes, uh, so in Ohio, actually, we have a really special grant called the Ohio Spartan Grant for students that are from the state of Ohio. As soon as you're admitted, you know you have a minimum of $10,000 in scholarship, and that can go up based on your academic um, excellence. Um, also, MSU is on a flat rate tuition, which means you can take 12 to 18 credits for a um, for a um, uh, 15 credit rate. So as a student, feel free to take your, you know, some extra classes outside of the classroom to kind of supplement what you're studying. Our scholarships, when you apply, they're absolutely, you do not have to worry about adding additional information. We're going to look mostly at your um, test scores, your uh, grade point average, your essays, all of your application. If you choose not to apply with a test score, we are test optional this year and the upcoming years. Um, you don't need to worry about them for scholarships because you'll absolutely still be considered for that. And most of our students do come in with some financial aid, although we do recommend that if you have a chance, go outside of the university and look for scholarships there as well. So moving on just to talk about some of our recent updates, we are also a test optional university. So students aren't required to submit the ACT or SAT score. They can indicate on their application whether they want to do so and they will not be negatively impacted. Um, we are also going to be doing this for the next three to five years. So for any incoming juniors as well, we will be test optional. Um, for normal admissions, we take a look at your transcripts from the time that you're a freshman to the time that you're a junior. And we look at your class curriculum as well and we do read every essay. You can apply to Michigan State via the MSU app, the Common app, or the Coalition app. And um, with this, I'm gonna have Iris conclude things off. Yes, um, so if any of you have any questions, like I said, I am the admissions counselor for all of the state of Ohio. Please definitely feel free to contact me at irissvb at msu.edu and go to our admissions uh, website and check out some of our great videos. We do not have um, uh, in-person visits at this time, but we are planning to do so in the near future. So keep an eye out on our website for additional information. And we hope you guys have a great day and go green. Go white. Great, thank you. Um, so that is all of the information from the schools, um, but I do just wanna share my screen with you to ask a question to our panelists. And that question is, what is your favorite favorite event or tradition on campus? And you guys can just answer in the order that you presented. Hi again, everyone. Um, I'm gonna answer on behalf of Brian and myself about my favorite UM tradition. Um, when I was a student at the University of Michigan, my favorite thing to do during exam time was go to midnight breakfast. This is an event that the University of Michigan hosts every semester during exam times. Um, I know that myself and a bunch of my friends were in the library super late at night. So they set up in the union um, and they have an entire catered breakfast for everyone. Usually the university president is there like scooping out scrambled eggs for everyone. It was a super nice and fun study break for me um, and a chance for my friends and I to kind of de-stress during the very stressful time of finals. All right, so on behalf of Drew and I, it's definitely Songfest. Uh, Songfest is 
a great way that all of our campus organizations come together. Uh, they perform a dance and a song and they raise money every year for a great cause. Hi everyone, I would say one of my favorite traditions is our uh, welcome week uh, activities that we have for all of our incoming freshmen and particularly the involvement fair where all of our 1400 plus student organizations set up on the Oval the first weekend when our new students move to campus. And it's a great way to see all of the things that students can get involved with. And it's just a great energy and exciting time as students are starting to get involved with a variety of things on our campuses. Hi everyone. So for the University of Vermont, I think one of the, the favorite traditions is one that I spoke about in my presentation. Uh, it's convocation where it's a candlelight ceremony um, right the night before classes start every year where everyone comes together and there's um, just it's sort of a really nice moment for everyone to kind of come together and mark the beginning of the school year. It's after uh, sort of a, a sort of parade down the main street of Burlington where all students um, and staff walk down. We basically block off main street and everyone walks from one part of campus down to the central green um, and have this really nice sort of candlelit ceremony. Um, and then another one that's just like a, a fun one that I didn't speak about is uh, our campus um, spring fest. Every year we have a really fun sort of festival with um, a concert and there's like a Ferris wheel and lots of other fun events um, that happen just as like a nice um, time to celebrate the warmer weather that's coming in the spring. Uh, my favorite tradition at the University of Akron, and there's so many, but would be walking through the split rock. It's a magical rock. If you walk through it during orientation, you get four good years of luck. If you walk through it during finals week, you're guaranteed to get all A's on your finals as long as you still study. And uh, to answer for Michigan State, my personal favorite tradition is to be able to paint the rock that we have every year. Every single club gets to paint the rock and represent their logo on there. So just a fun team building time where you can really get to know your community and build your Spartan family doing that. I didn't know if you wanted to add anything, Iris. Yes, absolutely. Um, two of my favorite traditions, actually. One is, and they're kind of tied together. Um, any kind of football Saturday, going to a football game, watching the marching band, band play, the drum line is fantastic. And then if the weather is nice and warm, um, going to the uh, MSU dairy store and getting a nice scoop of ice cream. That's awesome, love it. All right, great. Um, so I'm just gonna share my screen one final time just to share a little bit of information. So I just want to say thank you to our presenters and thank you to our attendees for joining us. Um, when you do close out of this window, there will be a link to a really quick four question survey. We would appreciate any feedback you can provide. And also this was just one of many sessions being hosted this evening. So please be sure to sign up for additional sessions. Um, I will also show the other sessions that are happening this evening. Um, so we had just finished up session D3 and then these are the remaining sessions that are happening this evening. And then in about a week, you will receive a recording of this session and other sessions that have happened throughout the evening. Um, so I wish you good luck in your applications, application readings and writings, and best of luck. Thanks, everybody. Have a great evening.